guys, this is Mala coming to you from Mala's Kitchen. To yours, where all of the magic happens. Are you feeling a little peckish today? Well, I am. I'm actually starving. So how about we do this? We get this recipe started. Stick around to find out what it is. One cup measured of chickpeas that I'm going to soak overnight to make falafel. Adding some water to soak the chickpeas. So by morning, it should plump up and we can get started. After covering with a few inches of water, I am going to add a half a teaspoon of baking soda. That's going to help to soften up our beans. Hola foodies, this is your girl Mala coming to you from Mala's Kitchen to yours. And guess what? Today we're getting ready to make a yummy, yummy, yummy falafel a la Mala style, of course. And I know, I know, before we go over what all the ingredients I'm going to be using, I know you want to know, well, what is falafel? Well, falafel is a popular Middle Eastern fast food made of a mixture of chickpeas or rather fava beans. It's a mixture of chickpeas, fresh herbs and spices that are then made into little balls or little patties. Those patties or little balls are then either deep fried or you can bake them off to make a healthier version of this recipe. It is thought that falafel actually originated in Egypt as Coptic Christians at that time looked for a healthy replacement, or rather a hearty replacement of meat, of meat during the long seasons of fasting and or Lent. It has become a popular vegan food in Egypt as well as throughout the Middle East. And not only just the Middle East, I should say pretty much throughout the world because I am a lover of falafel. So now let's go over all of these beautiful ingredients and what we have here. Alrighty, so what do we have over here? We've got some chickpeas and of course I used the hard beans, which are the raw beans that I pre-soaked last night. I covered it with a couple inches of water and at about a half a teaspoon or so of baking soda to help the beans soften a bit. Now, of course, this is one cup of chickpeas, but it looks pretty much like two cups right now because, of course, the beans kind of soaked in all of that moisture and they began to puff up a bit and they got a bit softer. So now let's go ahead and go over what's on my cutting board here. Let's start with some of these spices first, okay? So we'll be using some ground cumin, of course, and I'll be using one tablespoon of ground cumin. Then we'll be using some ground coriander or coriander powder. We'll be using a half of a tablespoon of coriander powder. If you notice in here, I've got here, it kind of looks like snow or uh, flour, but it's not. I've got two tablespoons of cornstarch and to that I've added a quarter of a teaspoon each of cumin powder and coriander powder. To this, we're just simply going to mix and set aside. And basically when we're ready with those patties, just before we deep fry it, you know me and cornstarch, right? Well, if you know anything about me, I love to dust everything in cornstarch because it gives you that super light, fine layer of crispness, right? So that's what we're gonna leave this reserve it for. Over here, what do I have? I have four tablespoons of this yellowish looking flour. Well, it's chickpea flour or what Indian people, Indian folks will call basin, right? So we have four tablespoons of that. And we'll be using, of course, some baking powder, which I'll be using one teaspoon of baking powder. Now, just a little tip ahead of time, we're not going to be adding any of the chickpea flour to basin or the baking powder until the very last, okay? And of course, we'll be adding kosher salt. This is the only salt I'll be using throughout this particular recipe to taste. 
Now let's go over what's on my cutting board. Hmm. We've got some fresh spices as well. Oh, I almost forgot. We're gonna be using one teaspoon of the ground black pepper. And of course you can see it's not very fine. It's a bit more of that uh, coarse grind of black pepper powder. We have over here one cup of fresh parsley, three quarters of a cup of fresh coriander. We have here around about a half a cup of chopped fresh dill, one cup of chopped, I would say yellow onion, All right? So it's a half of a large onion, so that's about one cup, four cloves of fresh garlic. And to this, we're going to add into a food processor over here. Okay, so I'm gonna start with first the onions and the garlic, get that going. Then we're gonna slowly add the chickpea in and then of course the other herbs as well. So we've got our onions in, our garlic in. Next, we're going to add that cumin powder. Then we're going to add our coriander powder to this. We're going to add our black pepper. There we go. Get that black pepper in. And now we're going to add a bit of those chickpeas. So I'm just gonna add a handful at a time just to get this started. There we go. Let's get the lid on this, baby. And let's start it. I apologize for the noise ahead of time. There we go. And we are looking gorgeous. I'm gonna get all of these together and I will see you back in a few. Now I'm gonna add our fresh herbs. So in goes our parsley, in goes our coriander. Now here goes our dill. Make sure we get all of those herbs in. Pop the lid back on this baby. And here we go. Alrighty, so our chickpeas mixture here along with our spices and fresh herbs is all done. And look, it kind of looks, you know, it's not a puree, it's more like a coarse meal. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add some kosher salt to taste. And that's going to be probably around about a teaspoon of salt or so that's in there. I'm going to mix this all together and then I'm going to stick this in the refrigerator to cool down for about an hour or so. Now the good thing with falafel, it's pretty forgiving. So let's just say in case I wanted to prep this for a party or something ahead of time, I could make this a day ahead and this could pretty much keep in a refrigerator for at least two days before I start frying it. Now the key in refrigerating this at this stage is so that this mixture firms up. When it comes out and I'm ready to start the frying, that's when I'm going to add the basin, which is the chickpea flour to this, along with the baking powder. Mix it all together, form my bowls using some wet hands, and then of course, douse it in a little bit of cornstarch before I start the frying process. This I could also make this ahead of time add everything together and I could freeze them in layers and it could pretty much keep for up to a month. But for the sake of this video, we're not going to do that. I'm simply refrigerating at this stage for about an hour Then we'll come back, add the basin, which is the chickpea flour, and then we're going to add the um, baking powder and get ready to start frying off these babies. One other thing for all of you spice freaks out there, if you want to add a bit more zing to this, you could certainly add some red chili powder to this, about a good teaspoon or so, or maybe a quarter teaspoon of cayenne powder, and that would definitely add a nice little zing to this. But I'd like some folks who may not like it quite as spicy to enjoy this. And of course, that's totally optional. I've already added black pepper into this. 
Alrighty, so our chickpeas mixture has been chilling for an hour. I'm going to add now our baking powder. And we're going to add in our basin, our chickpea flour to this and give it a little mix. And we're just going to give it a nice little mix like this to make sure we get everything nicely incorporated in here. And then of course, as you can see, my hands are nice and wet. So I'll be using my hands to form our little bowls and or patties. So let me get started on this here. This is nicely mixed in and this is the nice consistency of what we want. So let me just show you how we make the first one. So it's pretty much, it's quite easy. You can use like a, you know, an ice cream scooper to get the same amount. Let me get one. So I've got an ice cream scooper and pretty much I'm using that so that I get the same amounts and the same size for the ball. So I'm going to make one into a ball like this. It's a pretty decent size. And remember I talked about cornstarch, right guys? So I am a lover of cornstarch because I want that beautiful, nice, thin layer of Christmas on the top on around this beautiful ball. So look how beautiful that's held together. So we're just gonna gently roll this into the cornstarch, just like so. Tap off the excess, there we go. And I'm just gonna lay it in there. Now I'm gonna get another scoop. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna form this into a patty. So first I make a ball and I do not want to flatten it too much because I don't want it to be thinner than about a half an inch or so. So there we go. Again, once again, roll it into that cornstarch. Give it a nice little zhuzh like that. Be gentle as you pick it up. Roll it again. And there we go. Tap off that excess. Form it nicely place it into a bowl and we're gonna get ready to start flying in just a bit let me finish the rest alrighty guys so our first batch is in I'm starting with the patties and I've just added them to our nice hot oil and of course I'm using ghee right so it's much more natural for all you vegans out there of course, if you wanted to use something else that wasn't key and you wanted to use maybe grapeseed oil, vegetable oil, olive oil, you know, whatever floats your boat. Our leftovers here, which I haven't started on, which are the bowls, and of course I made them a really nice size. As you can see, I was very generous with the cornstarch as it's sitting in here and waiting because you don't want them to stick to your bowl. So I'm going to continue and get these all fried up and I'm going to show you what that looks like in a bit. All right, let's flip these over and see what happens. There we go, nice and gentle. Nice and gentle as you do it. There we go. We're looking beautiful. Our falafel is holding together nice. We've got that beautiful crust. And there we go. So I'm gonna let these continue to fry and then we'll get them out of here. Alrighty guys, so our first batch is out. As you can see, gorgeous. And I'm working on our second batch. And of course, while you're at it, you can simply, I've just flipped over this particular second batch. You can just take a little bit of the oil from the pan and just douse it over the top and just get the process going. As you can see, our falafel bowls are beautiful and they're nicely puffed up. So I'm going to finish up with these babies here. Just gonna flip this one over to its other side. Get it nice and browned, beautiful. Get that over to its side. So. As you can see, it's puffing up, so you want all of the sides nicely brown. So you just kind of gently turn it 
into your pan. I didn't want to add or overcrowd this with too much oil. So I'm pretty much doing this. And it is looking beautiful. I gotta say I'm very happy with this. For this. And our last set are ready to be popped out. Look how beautiful and golden they are. We'll pop them right in there to drain. And we are looking gorgeous in here. Smells beautiful, by the way. I can't wait to dig in on one of these babies. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yummy. So next step, plating up. Alrighty foodies, so our falafel is nicely plated up here. Of course, I've garnished with a little bit of lemon, some fresh red onions, and of course, some beautiful fresh parsley. I'm about to simply dust this with a little bit of fiery red chili powder. So here goes some magic. There we go. Sprinkle a little bit of that in here, make everything look nice and pretty. And we add a little bit of spice to our dish. And there you have it. Falafel a la mala style. Let's get in there for a nice tight shot. Look how beautiful. How gorgeous is our dish look, huh? Beautiful. That is a gorgeous falafel. Mm, mm, mm. Take a look. Nice. Beauteous, 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 beauteous. And there we go. Palapo a la mala style. Guys, once again, thank you for watching. This is Mala coming to you from Mala's Kitchen to Yours. And I am presenting Palapo a la mala style. There we go. Voila, there's our dish. And here we are again. Guys, thank you so much for watching. This is Mala coming to you from the fabulous Mala's Kitchen to yours where magic and more happens. Thank you so much for watching again. And please, you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Give me a like, a follow, a share, and hey, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.